Good Monday morning to you. Uh, this is Mark Pierce again of churchrequel.com. Hope that you've had a really uh, great weekend and that you're ready to get uh, this uh, new week, the first full week of the new year, off to a great start. Uh, we're studying the Gospel of Matthew and we are working our way through the first few verses of John chapter 3. Uh, let's pick it up with verse 4 of chapter 3 this morning. Now John wore a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locust and wild honey. Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about the Jordan were going out to him, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. We'll stop there for just uh, the moment. We'll pick it up there tomorrow. But uh, I find it interesting that when I get to this part of the verse, this doesn't completely add up for me. Again, I don't know about you, but as I um, read the part about John wearing a garment of camel's hair, he's got this leather belt around his waist, that his diet is eating locust, which is hard for anyone of our uh, day and age to uh, imagine. Wild honey, I get that part. But his diet was very simple. Uh, his clothing was very basic. Um, you certainly have this concept of almost a wild man, certainly someone who would almost be a hermit out in the desert. Now, what then follows is where the um, difficulty comes in, where it doesn't quite make as much sense, because we then see in verse 5 that Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around about the Jordan were going out to him. I mean, I just wouldn't have expected this. I think sometimes we have this uh, misunderstanding of who John the, Baptist, uh, John the Baptist was. He certainly may have had this uh, kind of wild look about him, at least from our standpoint. But uh, it wasn't all that terrible for the people who were going out. It certainly wasn't off-putting. In other words, one of the things that I think that, that we can infer from Matthew's Gospel along with the other three Gospels is that John the Baptist had something called charisma. There was a tremendous attraction to him. People of all parts of society, including, as we'll see tomorrow, the religious leaders, really wanted to hear what John the Baptist had to say and wanted to submit to John the Baptist's preaching and teaching, as well as to his baptism. Uh, it says here that um, Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about the Jordan were going out to him, and they were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sin. Now, this is not the kind of activity that takes place of someone that you just think isn't quite right in the head. Uh, this is the kind of activity that takes place when someone has taught something that goes right to the very soul and character of who you are. And that's what we see in the case of John the Baptist. Now, as I sit here and I contemplate this passage this morning, you know, oftentimes we have such a short period of time in our Bible studies that we don't really have a, a lot of time to kind of talk through what this might mean for us. Very important, of course, whenever we're studying the Word of God, not just to take a look at what it said, but also what it means and what the application is for how we live out our life. And certainly as I am contemplating and thinking through my own ministry, one of the things that really comes to my mind is that, you know, this isn't about necessarily having uh, all of the fancy stuff. It isn't about having the, the great building. It's not about having... Uh, you know, all of the great microphones and the great screens. Really, a lot of what it comes down to is just having the right message. Uh, really having God's message. Having the Holy Spirit be so powerful in my life or in the life of wherever it is that you go, the teacher that you submit to, that God, through His Holy Spirit, has the ability to connect right to the soul, right to the heart of the listener. This clearly was the case in John the Baptist. It wasn't about what John wore. It wasn't about what John ate. 
It really wasn't even about John's charisma, although I think that he had a great amount of charisma. It really came down to the fact that his message was very, very basic. It was repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It always was pointing the way towards Jesus and never towards himself. I think that that still has a very strong and powerful message today. That if we're about preaching Jesus, if we're about teaching his repentance, that if the Holy Spirit is involved, men and women and children will come and flock, will go out of their way to hear the true and authentic message of God. Thank you for listening this morning, and I'll talk with you again tomorrow.